Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to go over the IPR. Uh, we just uh, did a pretty big overhaul to kind of um, update and fix a bunch of things. So I'm going to talk about that, but I'm also just gonna go through the IPR kind of like if you're a new user to kind of give you an idea of how everything works. So let's get started. First of all, let's talk about the toolbar up here. Here we can save images, you know, directly from the IPR um, to file. You can save it to mplay, which will just send that image to mplay. You can export to Orbex over here. You can change some update settings. So for example, if you're working the scene and you don't want the IPR to load certain things, for example, deformations or light changes, you can turn those off. You probably would primarily do that if you are concerned about performance. So if you have like a massive scene with thousands of instances and it's kind of slow, slowing down your IPR, you could temporarily disable this. You have a resolution setting here. So by default, this is resolution from camera. And so um, we can see that, you know, if I set this to 100%, this is exactly the resolution that is set here in the camera, which is currently 900 by 900 pixels. However, if I set this to fill window, it actually fills the window. And one thing that we've added is these safe bars. So before, if you had the fill window setting, you couldn't really tell where your composition was, and that's no different. We have this, these bars up here where you can um, pretty clearly tell you know, where your composition ends, basically. Then we have our AOV settings here. And so if I enable some AOVs, so let's say we're gonna do the object node name, for example, Cryptomat, uh, we can load that here. And you can see that this kind of view is a little bit odd. And so um, that's what that LDR tone mapping button is for. Um, so if we enable that, you can see that now we actually see the proper layers. This is the same, I think, for Z-Depth and might be the same for a few other AOVs. Layers, this is if you're using object layers. Um, so in this case, I have, you know, one and two on two different object layers. And then uh, ROPs, this lets us switch between different ROPs on the fly. So for example, if I had another ROP here um, and maybe I um, have like a different environment, for example, let's do a daylight environment. I can quickly switch to this one and basically have like direct access and don't have to, you know, jump into the ROP and open the IPR here. You can do that directly from, from there. Uh, and then under preferences, this only really matters if you have the floating IPR. If you select this, it will always stay on top instead of disappearing behind um, other windows. This is where uh, I should probably mention, by default, if you don't have any IPR open and you open IPR, uh, up here in through your op or through the octane toolbar it'll appear in a floating window however um, if you want it to be integrated into the viewport you can do that by just uh, right clicking up here and selecting octane qt5 ipr okay and then here in the icon bar we start with some render settings so this first of all this button just you know enables or disables your render then we have reload scene which basically is a complete full reload where it will reload all geometry everything um, while this button next to it the update scene just kind of checks what has changed and only updates the things that um, have been modified so that's kind of like the difference between the two and uh, then pause rendering currently it just stops the scene from rendering however if you you know modify something in the background it will still like update it just stops the render process and then kind of similar to that we have over here the disable scene updating and what this one does it actually will keep rendering if you're still sampling uh, but if I disable stuff or change things around, it won't really do anything until I re-enable it. So those are kind of like two different flavors of, of pausing the updating. Uh, and we're planning to improve this in the future. Uh, they both kind of have their caveats, like pause rendering. If you're doing some animation or something, it can still make the viewport experience slow. While when re-enabling this disable scene updating mode, it's kind of the same as doing a full scene reload. And we'd love to have something that's kind of the best of both worlds where you can pause rendering and when you resume it doesn't reload everything but it also is fast while you work so we're trying to figure that out but that's kind of currently how it works and then full scene reload basically means that if you're like moving the animation slider instead of doing an update it will do a full scene reload every time which is slower but in some cases you might have things that don't update correctly um, used to be more the case in the past it's gotten a lot better but that's kind of what that's for uh, then we have a new thing here, which is the snapshot gallery. And so when I take a picture, you can see that it's now added to this gallery that popped up down here. And we can open and close this gallery with this. Um, and so this is cool for, you know, if you're wanting to kind of, you know, experiment around and, and try some different things. And, you know, you can take a snapshot and then you can compare them. So you can do this comparison mode where you can swipe back and forth. And you exit that by right click. You can also do the same top to bottom. 
so that's pretty cool. And if you're, you know, if you want to delete one, you can hit delete. And these are actually saved on disk in your project folder under a snapshot folder. And just to know, um, this this snapshot button used to send your image to mplay. This is now over here in the file settings, so you can still do it that way if you want to. But this kind of like has taken over that primary kind of use case. Then we have this setting, and by default, I think this is set to fit, and this just means that your image is basically scaled to fit the viewport. This doesn't change the render resolution, it just scales up your image. Um, if you set this to 100%, it you know scales it all 100%, like pixel to pixel, like 50% is 50% pixel to pixels. But the nice thing is that you now actually like are able to zoom into your image and actually like you know pixel peep if you need to, or or zoom out if you want more of like a thumbnail view for your composition. You can do all that, and if you set it back to fit, it will like dynamically resize. And then this second drop down over here, um, by default, it'll be set to auto, and that means it'll automatically. Uh, set the camera to whatever is set in your ROP settings, so right here in the render camera. And we actually got rid of the IPR camera setting here since this kind of uh, accomplishes the same task in a much better way. But however, you can also switch to a different camera, and this does not change your uh, ROP. This actually kind of is a, is a different different separate setting that's kind of temporarily so you can have like a working camera that you're moving around with for example or if you're wanting to explore an alternative angle you can do that and then if you ever want to like actually replace the render camera you can do that with that sign IPR camera to ROP otherwise if you switch back to auto it will go back to whatever is actually set in your ROP and else if you switch ROPs or switch the camera in your ROP then um, that will update too. So then over here we have a few perspective options and the zoom perspective is kind of what used to be the default for the Octane viewport. So if I zoom in and out, we're actually zooming in with our camera. So this is not just like zooming, you know, the image, it's actually zooming with a camera. Um, and then this second one, any perspective actually lets you like rotate around and kind of um, move through the scene instead of zooming around. And then um, if you just want to reset your camera back to the normal view, you can click this right here, reset perspective, and it resets. So, so this is really just kind of like temporarily modifying your current camera. It's different to like setting up a separate camera uh, and navigating around with that. And then we have two zones here. We have render zone. And this basically, um, as you can see up here in the sample range, it will continue sampling indefinitely, pretty much. And uh, opposed to that is film region, which film region will only render that specific area, um, but it will stop at your sample count. So if you want to kind of like see how it looks cleaned up at your specific sample count, then you can use that setting. And then we have subsampling, and this this really only goes into effect when using these two modes. So if I go into any perspective and I move around, it will temporarily basically, while I'm moving, uh, use a lower resolution of the viewport just to keep kind of things nice and snappy, which in this scene is not really a big deal, but if you had a really heavy scene, uh, that would kind of help with performance. Um, as you can see, if I turn this off, the kind of like the noise is much finer and that's what that's for. However, when you're moving around with the camera in the Houdini scene, this has no effect. And then we have a bunch of pickers here. Uh, the first one is pick focus, um, and this one lets you pick focus. However, keep in mind that um, this will only have effect if your camera has autofocus disabled. So if I have autofocus enabled, it doesn't matter where I click, but if I have this disabled, now we can actually focus and now it'll actually make a difference. This button lets you pick white balance. So if you had, you know, different colored lights and you wanted to change your white balance, you could use that. This one picks your material. So if I click on this right here, it'll actually load, uh, find, in this case, I'm using like an Octane Quick material, which is probably not the best example. But generally it'll, it'll hop to whatever material you're using. And then um, this next to it will pick the object that we're working on. So we can quickly go to the object that we're, we're working on and modifying settings there. The camera picker will select your camera. Uh, then we have the render target setting. And so if you're using the new render setup node, the render target and your ROP are in the same node. So this won't really make a difference, but if you're using the older workflow where they are separate, then you know this will select your render target, this will select your ROP. And what's cool about this is anywhere you are really, if you want to quickly change, like your, for example, your environment settings, you can click that and you're, you're here. So really these kind of buttons are there to quickly let you kind of navigate with your IPR as like the center. And then we have a few like, um, you know, viewer type modifiers. So one is disabling depth of field. Just keep in mind, this is only for the IPR. If you actually want to disable depth of field for the render, you can do so in the ROP under properties. 
then we have our you know, showing alpha in this case everything there's no alpha channel but you would see kind of like where your alpha is you can enable or disable your denoise view which in this case is very similar i imagine with the youtube compression you probably won't be able to take it to see a difference at all but this basically lets you enable and disable uh, the denoiser and then we have clay mode which just kind of like uh, replaces your material with like a clay material i think it still keeps the normals but kind of the colors are all replaced with just clay and then finally we have this decal wireframe thing and i don't have a decal in this scene i actually used uh, just geometry for these but if you had a decal in here it would show you kind of a, an outline of, of where the decal is working and then finally we have um, some settings over here so we can kind of see the memory we're using and how it's being used we can see some texture information uh, geometry information regarding instances and that kind of stuff and if you're using network rendering you would also see some information here but yeah that's kind of going through i think all the uh, details on the ipr i hope that you guys uh, like the update you know if you have any other feedback please let us know but we've been pretty hard at work at this and i'm pretty excited about it and maybe if you're a new user maybe none of these features you know are surprising uh, but if you've been using octane for a while you probably are pretty excited that some of these really useful and almost you know basic features are now here so yeah thanks for watching and you guys have a good day